you know, I took all the ugly ones and the overripe ones rather than like let them spoil. I got a bunch of workers here today working, so I'm gonna process these into tomato sauce. So today I'm gonna show you how I'm gonna make the best tomato sauce in the world out of the world's worst tomatoes. So the first step is gonna be to take the skins off. I'm just gonna kind of rinse them off. You don't get any like dirt or pollen or anything like that off them. You don't want it in your sauce. Now there's lots of ways you can peel a tomato, but I mean, it's not like with it, like you would peel a potato with like a peeler. Peel is not gonna come off easily. So you need to heat it. Hey, I'm just gonna go ahead, I'm gonna prep these, cut them in half cut the centers out, clean them up, cut off any of the blemishes, and then I'm gonna put them in the oven and we're gonna do like a roasted tomato sauce. So I put the oven on broil on the high setting so that I can almost burn them. I'm gonna put these on the top shelf. I'm gonna let it just like really heat up the top and almost turn like that skin black. It'll start to bubble and then it'll just peel right off after that. So I'll show you how we get them prepped. Okay, so I'm gonna get the tomatoes cleaned up and get them down onto my cookie sheet. You can see I put the parchment paper down on the cookie sheet first, and that's super important because these cookie sheets are made out of aluminum, and aluminum reacts with the acid in tomatoes, so you don't want, ever want to use aluminum when you're cooking tomatoes because they will absorb the taste of the aluminum. So the acid of the tomatoes picks up the taste of the aluminum out of any like aluminum cookware. So you wanna make sure you're using stainless steel cookware. I'm gonna cook it in like either stainless steel or ceramic pot so that it doesn't pick up the taste of the aluminum. And then so for my cookie sheets to roast the tomatoes, I make sure I put parchment paper down so the tomatoes don't actually touch the cookie sheet so it doesn't pick up that aluminum flavor. And then to clean them up, I'm just gonna kind of cut them in half like this. I'm gonna cut that core out. And that's about it. So I'm just gonna kind of cut the core out. If there's any like blemishes I wanna get out of there, now's the time I cut those off. And then I'm just gonna line them up on my cookie sheet like this and I'm gonna broil them. Okay, and then they look a little something like this. You just peel the peel off, just like that. That's what they look like when they're peeled. You know, we, we planted about 1,200 heads of garlic this year, and there's always a certain amount that like starts to rot in the ground. So this is all my kind of rotty garlic. I just peeled it to eat. I might make some garlic powder out of some of it, but so I'm gonna take a few handfuls of this, stick it in my food processor, and then we're gonna brown the garlic in the pan before we add our tomatoes. So I'll show you how we put it in the food processor and get chopped up. Oh, well, this is my food processor, just uh, standard Ninja brand. I don't know, I think we got it like Target or something like that. Uh, so I'm gonna use the blade attachment. I really just kind of dumped a bunch in. I'm not gonna measure it or nothing. I just, I mean, you can't really go wrong with uh, too much garlic in your spaghetti sauce. Okay, so I got two different pots that I'm gonna use today. This one is a stainless steel pot. So you don't wanna use an aluminum pot because it'll soak up the aluminum taste. For cooking purposes, stainless steel is okay. And then these pots are like really nice actually for making sauce. So it's a cast iron pot with porcelain finish on it. It's a La Crusette pot if you're familiar with the brand. They're like, I don't know, it's like a million dollars for this thing. Okay, so I'm gonna brown my garlic just a little bit first. I set my stove top with my pot like medium low. You don't really want high heat because you don't want to burn your garlic. It's gonna make it bitter and uh, it's gonna make your whole sauce bitter if you burn it. Just look into like brown it, a little bit golden brown before you add your tomatoes in. Uh, I always use extra virgin olive oil, so I'm gonna use, uh, you know, probably like a couple tablespoons of extra virgin olive oil in the pot, and then I'm gonna add my garlic, brown that, and then I'm just gonna dump my pans of peeled tomatoes into the browned garlic. All right, so I got my garlic browned. That's kind of what you're looking for, you know, just kind of golden brown kind of sticking to the bottom, but that's okay, because as soon as we add the tomatoes, it's gonna uh, release everything that's sticking to the bottom and all that flavor is gonna end up in your sauce. Okay, then I'm just gonna dump my peeled tomatoes right in there, liquid and everything. 
Okay, so I got two of my trays of tomatoes into this big pot. You can see it's like super chunky and watery at the same time. So now I'm gonna add a little bit of salt. The salt's gonna help pull more of the water out of the meatiness of the tomatoes. I mean, I'm putting like a tablespoon of salt into this big batch. And then we can add more salt later, but you can never take the salt back out. So you wanna start with just a little bit and then you add a little bit more later. So you can see like it's got these big chunks of tomato. So we're just gonna slow cook this like for hours. I'll just kind of leave it on medium low, kind of low and keep stirring it every now and then. And what's gonna happen is all like the flesh of these tomatoes is just gonna break down. It's all that fiber is gonna break down into the sauce. Well, at the same time, all this water is gonna kind of evaporate. So we're wanting to evaporate some of the liquid as well as break down the meatiness of the flesh. And you wanna do that nice and slow. You don't wanna boil this or anything. You just wanna kind of simmer it for a few hours, let it all break down, let the magic happen. You could definitely add any dried herbs or anything like that. I'm doing this three ingredients, tomatoes, salt, and garlic. That's it. All the ingredients are from my garden, except for the salt. Okay, so we're just gonna let that chill for a few hours and we'll come back. All right, y'all, so you can kind of see it's been simmering for several hours. It's actually the next day now because I got really tired last night and I just put these in the fridge and I went to bed. So I just pulled these back out this morning, put them back on the stove and you can see like I haven't blended it or anything. And you can see how the tomatoes is really cooked down, but it's pretty chunky still. And so now I'm gonna blend them. It's got like, blades on it you know and then i just stick this right into the pot right so then i don't have to worry about building pressure in my blender all the steam just escapes it leaves it kind of chunky but still blends it you can control how how much it blends with this you know you blend around the pot you stop blending anytime it doesn't necessarily blend it all at once it just blends small portions at a time so i use the stick blender to blend my spaghetti sauce makes a real nice consistency so and i can just stick it right in the pot i don't really have to like dirty a blender i don't have to worry about like burning myself and getting it all splashed all over the place so i'll show you how we use this and mix our sauce up okay so now you can kind of see the consistency and i'm just gonna let it simmer a little bit more it's a little bit watery for me you can see it was like filled up to here so i've reduced that much water out and i'm gonna reduce a little bit more water out today before we bottle it up and you can use whatever kind of consistency you want i want a nice thick consistency for my tomato sauce but you can see i got to blend it up pretty nice um so now all i gotta do is evaporate some more of the water out that's going to condense the flavors a little bit more so at the end is when i want to add like some more salt and any other seasonings that you might want is at the end because if you do it now those flavors are going to condense and you might end up with too salty sauce if you put the salt in now so you want to put the salt in at the end all right y'all so you can see it's kind of reduced all the way about halfway down i've evaporated out about half the water i'm i'm pretty happy with that consistency uh you can see how it's pretty saucy a little bit chunky so I'm just going to put it in jars now and we'll get jarred up and eat it later.